Hey Fawn fam! Welcome back to my channel and if you're new, hey what's up? My name is Tanya and thank you all so much for joining in and watching this video. As always, there will be timestamps listed down below so you can jump around and if you like what you see, smash that subscribe button, hit that notification bell and thumbs this video up. I do try to post as regularly as possible with as many new releases as possible so being subscribed and turning that notification bell on will go a long way in ensuring you never miss out on all the fun, new content, new releases and everything that is the Fawn family. Now I tested out a lot of products, I swatched a lot of products and they... I think there were more hits than misses but there were definitely some misses. So I'm gonna start off with like the biggest disappointment to me. <laughs> the Natasha Denona Transfer Matte Pore Vanishing Matte Foundation. Oh my gosh, you guys, this looked so cakey, and it just sat on top of the skin. It did not blend out, it didn't mesh into the skin. It like emphasized and created pores and lines, and it just looked terrible. And I did pick up two shades. I tried 5N Fair Neutral. I didn't even swatch did I swatch? No, I didn't even swatch the other one. The other one I didn't even open because I, I the other one is a yellow undertone and I had got it to mix in uh, with the lighter one because none of them really looked to be my exact shade match but the two that I picked up looked fairly close and the shade was a little bit light for the 5N Fair Neutral but it wasn't the shade. It was the formula. It was just dry, cakey, not good. Now, I'm thinking that maybe if you have oily skin, it might might play a little bit nicer since it is such a matte foundation and it is very matte. And I have normal skin, so it just didn't want to cooperate and I can't imagine this being nice on dry skin either. I think that if it's going to work, it's going to work on oily skin the best. But it just, I didn't even build it up. I wasn't making it full coverage. That was on like the first go round and it was just terrible. Then when I tried to take a damp and beauty blender to see if that would help kind of mesh it into the skin some more, that just lifted the foundation right off my face. It was so bad. So I don't recommend that at all and I'm really sad about it. Then I w went to go test the Clinique Even Better Makeup and I swear Sephora sent me the wrong shade. This is a very medium beige shade, so there was no way I could even try. I put a pump on the back of my hand to see if it was really like this dark, and it's this dark. So unfortunately, I couldn't try it out. I will try to exchange it for a lighter shade, but um, this was not good. It was shade CN62 Porcelain Beige. There's nothing porcelain. It's all beige. So then, because the Natasha Denona wasn't great, this I couldn't even try out. I was so frustrated, and I didn't know if maybe the Cover FX Gripping Primer plus Firming was maybe affecting the Natasha Denona foundation. So... I was going to try it again until the beauty blender just lifted it off my face. And then I was like, okay, no, this foundation just isn't going to work for me. So then I went in with my beauty blender bounce foundation since I already know that it performs so well. And I did use it over top of this primer and it's gorgeous. This primer is so good. It really does grip your skin. I've never had a primer to that texture, that final finishing feel. I've never had anything like it. It's tacky. It, it's very grippy. Um, it's kind of almost like a watered down glue. Almost. I don't really know how to describe it. You, If you guys can get into a Sephora and just kind of swatch it and feel it, you'll know what I'm talking about. And you can just tell when you're putting it on that it is going to grab that foundation and it's going to make it longer lasting. So I do really enjoy the primer. It comes in a nice soft matte squishy tube and I will be reaching for that again and again. 
Uh, then I tried out the Jouer Essential High Coverage Liquid Concealer. It has hyaluronic acid in it and it's oil free. This is a beautiful concealer. Unfortunately, neither shade worked for me. I did mix the two shades and it worked out mixing them, but I really want to get my correct shade because it is such a beautiful foundation or uh, concealer. I have Snow, which was way too light and wheat which was way too beige so mixing them did work but since I do like the formula so much I am going to try to get a, a one shade that's lighter one shade that's darker my perfect shade uh, then I tested out the Givenchy matte finish and enhanced radiance loose powder in prism Libra in number shade 5 satin blanc look how beautiful this is now, this powder is so silky, smooth, soft. It brushes on your face so beautifully. It, the formula is just like silk powder. It is awesome. My only problem was that it's, uh, there was no radiance in it. It was strictly a matte powder. So I do think it's beautiful. I love it. I like the way it feels, how it finished, everything like that. But it was supposed to be a mixture of mattes and radiant colors in here and when you mix them all together and you put it on there is literally zero radiance so that was a bummer and then I only had a chance to swatch the new Natasha Denona bloom blush and glow palette because uh, when I was swatching it, the colors were so warm, champagne, and it was just not icy the way my eye look is, so it would not have looked good to use it, but I did swatch it out, and I cannot wait to use it. Look at this new packaging, too. This is beautiful. I love this so much. The creams are absolutely gorgeous. I might only be able to use that one as an eyeshadow base or possibly mixing the two shades together, but it is very dark for my skin. I knew that when I was buying it, but I am a major Natasha Denona collector and I knew there were still going to be shades in here that would work for me because this cream blush and this highlight are absolutely going to work. The peach one, that again might be a little bit more of a shadow for me, but these are blinding, they are creamy, they are pigmented, smooth, so beautiful. I love how uh, she has the little protection over the cream so no powder gets in it. She has that in her big blush palettes, her contour palettes, so it's really fantastic packaging and I can't wait to actually play with it. Then I was going to try out the Balm, the Lou Manizer's Manizer's quad and none of these shades were really great for what I had going on with my eye look either so I swatched it and then I was like no I can't use it so you guys will at least see the swatches of how they look and it's nice but I, it's not anything mind-blowingly amazing I don't think you need that palette in your lives it's just mm. Uh, then the new Maybelline and Puma highlight arrived today, and again, this was way too champagne warm. I swatched it. It is so beautiful, so blinding. It looks like it's going to be like a wet looking highlight. It, um, it's so gorgeous. Like, I cannot wait to play with it. I really was hoping that I could highlight with it today, but it was just way too much on the warm tone, which I'm okay with because I do go for champagne highlights way more often. It was just, it would have clashed big time with what I have going on on my eyes right now. Oh, and this is what the Natasha Denona foundations look like. Really nice packaging. The pump, squeezy tube, everything. It just wasn't for me. Uh, and then on my eyes, I have the Viseart Liaison Palette. I did a separate video on this. I will link it depending on which one goes up first. The videos will be linked together though. I won't get into details, but oh my god, so beautiful. First time I think I actually used all nine. I did use, but I think it's the first time I used all nine shades in one of these Viseart palettes. So good. Then I also threw on some ABH uh, loose glitter in the shade Crystal Cave 
and I use the ABH Glitter Adhesive too. Again, that's in the eye tutorial, but these are such a win. They are so good. You guys need to try it. It is such a good glitter adhesive, and that shade of glitter is just perfection. Uh, I also tested out the ABH Stick Contour in Mink. I didn't think that I would like this. I'm not a cream contour person, but this is gorgeous and I will definitely be buying the full size. I could not believe how easily it blended out. I didn't lift the foundation, separate the foundation. It just melted into the foundation so beautifully. It is a perfect shade. It is so pigmented. It is buildable. I did it like a little bit at first because I was scared that it was going to wreck the foundation. And then when I saw how beautifully it performed, I put on some more and I freaking love it. Then I tested out the new Fenty Beauty Wada Brat Kilowatt Freestyle Highlighter. Oh my god, this is so beautiful. Like this, it just, oh, it's so good. I ended up spotlight highlighting with it. You can kind of see my tracks, don't mind that. I threw these in really quickly, but I did spotlight with it. I put it right in the arch of the brow, a little bit in the inner corner, and then a little bit in the center of the face. And it is just so beautiful. I cannot recommend this enough. I did not pick up the other new shade because I just won't wear a blue highlight. But even as a blush topper, if you like that glow, she is gorgeous. And then I tested out two Milani Baked Blushes. I laid down uh, Petal Primavera. I believe this is a new one. This was beautiful. I show you how this looks before I put the luminous one over it. It is such a beautiful pinky nude color. This one's matte and then this one is very luminous. It is Rosa Romantica. I think this one's the new one. I don't know. I picked up the new shades. I used two shades and then I picked up other shades I didn't have in my collection. I need to sneeze. <laughs> so Rosa Romantica is so beautiful, but it is very luminous. I love luminous blushes, so I'm here for it. I love it. If you guys don't like luminous, stay away from this color because it is glowy. It's almost like a hybrid of a highlighter and a blush in one. I think it is so, so beautiful, but I know not everybody is into that, so just be aware of that shade. But the other one I used is full on matte and it is gorgeous. So I think that's everything. If I miss, missed anything, it'll be in the video. I think I have time to do some lips. Yeah, I have time to do a mm, little bit of lip swatching. It is actually Valentine's Day and we're going out for dinner, so I didn't want to try to do the lip swatching and then run out of time to do my intro for this video, my intro and my outro for the eye tutorial and photos and all of that. So. I think I'm going to try to throw in lip swatching. There will be a timestamp if there is some down below. And if not, I just strictly ran out of time. So I'm sorry, guys. So if you want to see all this in action, then just keep on watching. So I'm going to start with the Cover FX Gripping Primer. It says that it's a unique jelly texture that creates a smooth glass-like finish on the skin and grips makeup. You get 30 milliliters or one fluid ounce. It's a nice soft matte packaging. It's just clear and looks very silicone dimethicone based. does have a bit of a sticky texture to it. I'm sure it's the gripping. And it does have almost like this barrier to it. It's thicker upon application. It's unlike any texture I've ever tried for a primer. This feels like it's going to really, really hold the foundation. Then the Natasha Nona, she is a cruelty-free brand. And this also has no parabens in it. I'm not seeing alcohol, which is amazing. Okay, perfect, so let's get into these. I like the packaging. Very just sleek, 
elegant. You get just under a fluid ounce, 0.95 ounces or 28 milliliters. So this is the shade 5N Fair. Nice pump and a squeezy tube. Oh, that might actually be my shade. I forgot to color correct. <laughs> awesome. And I forgot to go dampen my beauty blender. might be allergic to that primer. My skin is getting really itchy. This foundation looks very cakey. Like, really cakey. It's just sitting on top of the skin. <sighs> okay, I damped my beauty blender and then tried to pat it in and it lifted all the foundation right off. So, I don't know what is going on, if it's the primer or if the foundation just really isn't playing well. I'm going to remove this and oh, I think try a different foundation for today because I don't think it's the primer, I think it's this foundation. So I will be right back. All right, I have reprimed. I'm not color correcting because I don't know if this is gonna have to come off again. If this foundation doesn't work with this primer, then I'm gonna switch out primers and try again. So I also have the Clinique Even Better Makeup Broad Spectrum SPF 50 Evens and Corrects. I picked up, okay, before it was called 11 Porcelain Beige. Now it's called CN62 Porcelain beige. I don't see any alcohol in this and you do get a fluid ounce or 30 milliliters. I'm worried that this is going to be too dark. A little squeezy bottle. Oh my gosh. Okay, we are not trying this out. What the heck? I think they sent me the wrong shade because I would never grab something that dark. Um, we are just having a major fail all around right now. All right, I'm just gonna go to my Beauty Blender Bounce Foundation because I know that this performs really well and if it doesn't look good over the primer, then it is the primer and we'll retest out the Natasha Denona foundation separately. But for now, I'm just gonna stick with one that I know in case the primer is being weird and at least this is my color. Okay, this is looking flawless, so that foundation was just a flop. I just realized that my face is not itchy either, so I must have had a reaction to the foundation just by having it dotted on my face. So for some reason, that one is just not playing well with my skin type at all. So the primer is beautiful. It's making the Beauty Blender Bounce Foundation look very flawless, so I am very happy with it. And now let's hope that the Jouer uh, concealers are good. So let's start swatching. Okay, so we have snow. It looks very light. Whoa, yep. And wheat. These are very opaque and creamy. Oh my gosh, neither one of these shades are good shades for me. <laughs> oh, why? Uh, so we might be mixing. I don't think that snow is good on its own. 
It's gonna be very light. Okay, this concealer is beautiful. It's flawless, full coverage, just melts into the skin. I definitely need to get my correct shade because these two are doing the job mixing them together, but one is way too white and one is way too beige. So I do want to make sure I get my correct color and then test this out further, but it does look really pretty. All right, I just set my under eyes using my Estee Lauder Double Wear Stay in Place Matte Powder Foundation in the shade 1N0 Porcelain. I did not set under my contour line because I do want to try out the ABH Stick Contour in the shade Mink. I am scared to use this. I just am not really a con cream contour person, but I do want to give it a chance. That's pigmented. We're just gonna do a little bit. And I'm gonna take the Marc Jacobs The Shape brush. This seemed to be going on quite nicely. I like this a lot. I am blown away by how beautiful this just performed. It just melted in. It didn't lift the foundation. It didn't separate the foundation. It really is a beautiful product. I just realized that the Natasha Denona palette has two cream shades in it and I already set my face. It should, oh that's pretty. Whoa, I'm still gonna give it a try. I like this new packaging. This is beautiful. It's like a dreamsicle. So there are two blushes that are creams and two highlights. Let me get a little swatch. It's really, pr actually this isn't even gonna go at all with the eye look. Okay, I think we're gonna have to just save this for another tutorial. Whoa. Whoa. <laughs> so those are the two blush shades. And then, oh, that highlight though. Oh, so beautiful. And then this peachy one. Oh my gosh. These are beautiful. Yeah, this does not go with the eye look at all. But the moment I have one that this is going to go with, we are gonna rock this. Cut. All right, now I want to dust the Givenchy Prism Libra Limited Edition Matte Finish and Enhanced Radiance Loose Powder 4-in-1 Harmony in 5 Satin Blanc. Oh, she's so pretty. That looks so gorgeous. Okay, shaking it all up, you get this color.
I was hoping that this would be glowy, at least a little bit luminous, and it's not. It is a beautiful powder, and it goes on so effortlessly, but it does not have any luminosity to it. All right, I quickly did a little bit more contouring, bronzing, and my brows off of camera. And I wanna show you some of these Milani uh, Baked Powder Blush Shades. This is number 12, Bella Bellini. This is so oh, beautiful. Pink, rose, gold, champagnes, like that is so stunning. I really wanna use it, but it's not gonna match what we have going on. And same with Coralina, so coral and beautiful. I'm thinking of mixing these two. This one is Petal Primavera, number 14. Nice mauve rose. And then number 13, Rosa Romantica. Just looks so beautiful. So we'll do a little swatch. Yeah, that one's nice and peachy nude. That one looks a little luminous. Yeah, I think we'll mix those two shades. Yeah, the one, the first one is very luminous. Second one is more matte. Rosa Romantica almost is a little bit of a peachy highlight tone. It's very pretty. So you're gonna lay down a base of Petal Primavera. No, yes, first. She's pigmented. Here's the first one. Now I'm gonna go into Rosa Romantica. Yes, this one's very luminous. I love that, but if you don't like luminous blushes, you will not like that shade. There's the luminosity versus the matte. Now I had two highlights that arrived today, so let's swatch out Fenty Beauty's Wada Brat. <laughs> I think this might be pretty icy and nice with this eye look. Yes. Wow. And that's pink. That's so beautiful, whoa. And then the Maybelline Puma is a chrome highlight in the shade 08 Knockout. This looks very champagne toned. Ooh, that's pretty. Yeah, that's very golden. I think that's too golden for today, so I am gonna hold off on testing this one out. All right, I also have the Balm, the Lou Manizers Quad. So maybe one of these will be a good face to lay down because I want a spotlight with Fenty since it is so pink and intense. So here's what this quad looks like. Okay, so none of these are really what I'm looking for. Uh, so I am just going to stop trying this out. I'm gonna just stick with my Natasha Denona Super Glow 01 Fair for my base. And then we're gonna spotlight with Fenty. All right, going into the Fenty Water Brat Freestyle Highlighter, we are going to take the Sonia G Fan Pro and spotlight with this beauty.
a little goes a very long way. This is pigmented and blinding. Oh. That's pretty. Oh. Look at the dimension and the intensity and it's just like wet. It's so unbelievably just bam. I'm gonna take a little bit of that under the brow bone too. This is so beautiful. And when it's all set, damn. All right, so I'm gonna go finish up my lower lash line and then I have a few lippies to swatch. I will hopefully have time to include in this video and I'll see you guys in a little bit. All right, so I hauled these Natasha Denona Mark Your Liquid Lips Liquid Lipstick Mattes months ago and <laughs> I've never got around to actually testing them out so I did pick up five shades and we're going to do some lip swatching and these do not have any indication as to the color it does say number seven raw but there's not like a color swatch on here or anything uh, it is paraben free uh, her formula is cruelty free and it's made in Italy I generally love everything attached to Denona. There's very often a miss. So there's a nude. Actually, I'm gonna open them all up so we can see what I have. Then number eight, O Naturel. What? Number eight looks to be a little bit more peachy nude, where number seven looks to be a little bit more just nude. But we're going to find out. Then I have number nine, Giselle. Definitely a little bit more pinky nude. These are very similar, but there's a difference. And we have number 11, Pink Terra. I think I literally bought these like four or five, no, more like six months ago. Ooh, I like this shade, number 10, Lotus. Okay. So I'm going to start with the one that is very much going to not go with this eye look. So starting with number 11, Pink Terra. It's a nice doe foot. This is super pigmented. Whoa. This is feeling really nice though. Whoa. This is so comfortable. It's not really drying down totally. It kind of feels more like a cream uh, liquid lip. It's not emphasizing fine lines. It's not getting like crackly, tight, dry, uncomfortable. It has kind of like a nice plush feel. Wow, I like this a lot. Whoa, okay, on to the next. These do not remove easily. I have already read to my foundation underneath and we've got a few more to get through and I have dinner tonight, awesome. So now we're going to do number seven, raw. This is way too nude for me. It makes me kind of look a little dead but this could be really great for the center of the lip and creating an ombre. 
um, it's just not a good shade for me. Now I'll do 8 O Naturel. This might be way too nude for me too. The pigmentation is crazy with these. But this shade's not a good one for me either. Not at all. Now we're going to do number nine, Giselle. I think I like this one the most so far. I also really like the first one. It just, it's harsh right now. But I think the first shade and this shade are both really good shades. The other two, I could probably only do for an ombre. One more Natasha to know when to go. Number 10, Lotus. I really like this shade too. I just thought it was gonna be a little bit more like pinky nude toned and it's not, but it's really beautiful. And I love the formula of these. They are so, so good. Okay, I picked up the Fenty Beauty Stunna Lip Paint Longwear Fluid Lip Color in Unbutton. I actually have never swatched out Uncuffed, so I did grab my shade Uncuffed to also include in here, but that's why it's out of the packaging. I just don't have it anymore. And I actually have the red one that I've never lip swatched either. It's just in my collection. So she's super nude. I might have an issue again. <laughs> applicator yeah I don't like this color on me either <laughs> the formula feels really great though Might be throwing me too because all of these are so warm based and I have such a cool tone look going on so I'm not sure but I don't love this color on me but I love the formula and I can try uncuffed. The Fenty ones remove so easily in comparison to the Natasha Denona which makes me think the Natasha Denona will definitely have much longer staying power because this one is kind of like wiped off. The other one it was like rubbing your lips raw to get it off. So something to keep in mind too. I really like this color. This is a good one. Yeah, this is beautiful. Okay, my lips are totally gonna hate me, but I wanna try to give you guys as many options and products as I can. So I did also pick up six shades of the new L'Oreal Gold Addiction lipsticks. So I thought we'll put some of these to the test right now. I will start with shade number 964, Ruby Gold. And look at this packaging. Isn't this so beautiful? They killed it. I wish that sticker wasn't there. I mean, I can probably remove it. Does it remove easily, even with nails? Oh, it's starting to kind of tear. Nope, I, yeah, okay, so this does come off. 
it's just a pain in the butt. There's like this sticky leftover. I hate when companies take like such beautiful packaging and then do something silly like that. Ooh, that looks like a true blue toned red. That is beautiful. Oh, this feels so good after all those liquid lips. <gasps> This is really shiny. This almost looks like a lip gloss. That's crazy. Look at that shine. And this is a lipstick. What? This is beautiful. is unbelievably beautiful. I am blown away. What? How is this so shiny for a lipstick? I got these from Ulta and so far I highly recommend it. Now I have number 970 Penny Gold. There was actually a gold shade that I might go pick up now because this is so amazing. the shininess and they're so lightweight very easy to apply they're pigmented and the color is there but it's not like BAM in your face you don't need a lip liner you don't need to be crazy precise this is kind of a perfect lipstick now I have 952 beige gold this one will be more for creating that ombre lip. I know that'll be way too nude for me, but I'll swatch it. This is a really pretty champagne shift to it. It's actually not that nude. Like the stick. This just adds, whoa, a really beautiful sheen. Okay, I take it back. It's not nude. Like, look at the difference in that. It almost lets your lip pigmentation through, but giving it like this juicy, healthy, shiny glow. <sighs> so good. I think it almost has like a metallic finish, but a very subtle metallic finish. Damn, that's pretty. I have 958 pink gold. That looks like a Barbie pink. It matches my hair. <laughs> you guys, these are freaking perfection. What? Look at that. This might be one of my favorite lip colors, period. This is so good. And I'm wearing this baby to dinner because she's stunning. <laughs> I'm gonna put this one off to the side. It, the only thing with these lipsticks is just, the packaging is so beautiful, but it is a pain in the butt to put the lid back on because you actually have to get it on one way out of like, you know, four possibilities for clicking it on. So not a deal breaker, but I am noticing that. So I thought I would mention it to you guys in case that is a deal breaker for you. You do need to be precise with how you put it back on. Now 950 nude gold. This is so pretty too. Oh. Oh. You guys, you, you need to try these. Like you just, you need to pick these up. I hope they're not limited edition. They can't be, right? They can't be. Okay, one more to go. Now 956 Rose Gold. Oh, she's pretty. Mm, this is so good too, whoa.
Let me know if you guys have already tried these, if you are obsessing over them like I'm obsessing over them, if you're going to pick it up and try it. Out of all these lip products, I would recommend these so much. But if you want a liquid lip, the Natasha Denona and the Fenty are also beautiful. But this is so special. This is truly unlike any lipstick I have ever tried. And you guys know I have, I would say hundreds. It's probably in the thousands of lip products at this point. And for something to blow me away like this is truly amazing. And it's just so beautiful. Whoa. Thanks so much for watching this video. I really hope that you guys found this helpful, enjoyed all the products that I enjoyed, and if you were on the fence about buying some of them, hopefully I helped you to make up your minds. So please leave it in a comment down below what you're looking forward to trying, what you're going to be avoiding, if you've tried any of these products, what your thoughts are, all of that goodness. So that is it for this video. Please thumbs it up if you liked it, please share it, please subscribe if you haven't already, and until next time, good night, good morning, wherever you are. I love you guys so much and I will talk to you later. Bye guys.